It is 21 October 2017. We got this aerator uh, thing here for the lake. And uh, we had it on three little pieces of uh, nylon rope anchored out with uh, those cinder blocks. And one of the cinder blocks broke, or one of the lines broke. I, I don't, I just figured, I don't know, it just broke. And uh, so I got some yellow line because I figured it would be more visible so you could avoid it when fishing or while taking the, the boats out across it. And I tied it to this tree out across the lake and uh, went out over here to one of those trees over there and uh, figured that should work. And within a couple days, it had broke free. And this line here um, went out about 35 feet or so and then uh, was broke which didn't make any sense to me because it wasn't close enough to this thing to it got caught in the fan blades and got cut um, and it there's nothing there's no boat traffic here on the lake except our little paddle boats and stuff and I uh, hadn't taken that as I had across so I'm thinking a muskrat may have have uh, chewed its way through that line there I'm not sure at any rate um, when it uh, when that line there broke this thing spins if it's not moored down and it rotated all this line in a big wad that was wrapped around the cage uh, I've I've untwisted it but uh, it was it was quite the mess um, back up here it's, it's not so twisted but you can see, um, man, it was really twisted up. It took me a while to, to get this all undone. And uh, so at any rate, I've decided that I've got some steel cable over here. And uh, in case it is the muskrat chewing through that, he's not going to chew that, that, through that steel cable. Although I am worried about him trying to chew through this, through the electrical cord and uh, cause him more work for me to have to replace that too. So... Mr. Muskrat lives over there by the boat docks, and uh, he may have to go. At any rate, uh, I'm going to show you how we're going to attach this steel cable um, and get this get this aerator back out there and working. All right, so this stuff here is one eighth uh, slash three sixteenths cable. It's three sixteenths with the coating on it. Um, but uh, I'm going to strip that back, and so it's uh, going to be one eighth cable. And I've got these, uh, this little kit here. It's a sleeve stop thimble set, um, and I'm not going to use the stops because uh, that's not what I'm using it for. Uh, so I, I won't be using these two things. These are if you're attaching the cable through a through a hole and you just want to something to stop it from going through the hole. But I'll be wrapping it around uh, this thing. And putting these on crimping it down so that's what we're going to be doing all right so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to place my my nylon cable or uh, rope with this cable and so it's going to go through here crimp down like this so i'm going to have to take off um, about that much of the coating uh, so the, the the crimper thing will, will crimp down on just the wire so that's my first step. All right, so once I get that uh, cut on one side, I can peel this all off. And now I got just the cable. So since I want this to go through this thing and then through the, the hole on my aerator and then back through this thing again uh, so that I can crimp it we're going to start by putting the cable we're going to start by putting the cable through this and then we're going to feed this through the hole and then now we can feed this back through the ferrule again all right so now uh, now we've got the cable going through this ferrule on both sides and I'll take the crimpers and uh, crimp that down and hopefully it should uh, be good and tight. All right, so we got our crimpers here. Uh, this particular style crimps down. This particular style crimps down the center 
uh, you can see it doesn't doesn't close all the way so hopefully this will work I have not tried these kind before And that sucks. Does not does not work too good. So you can see it just cut right through. Uh, this is the kind the guy at Menards told me I needed. He probably had no freaking clue. All right, so we're gonna try this again and uh, see if we can crimp it without crimping it down all the way and breaking it. Alright, so this time we just crimped the crimpers far enough to where it just started to bite into them. And it uh, looks like it's, it's on there getting tight, so... But that sure is a... I don't think those are the right crimpers. Because um, it sure doesn't want to... Normally with crimpers you crimp them all the way and they're set to do the job right. And this you got to guess, which is not a very good way of doing that. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut all the cable ties I've got holding that yellow nylon rope onto the electrical cord and uh, cable tie the uh, steel cable to it. That way they stay together and you don't end up with the, with the electrical cord floating out somewhere and getting caught in something. And uh, plus it acts as a strain release relief on the... Uh, on the electrical cord because the uh, the thing holding it into place is a steel cable not the electrical cord you don't want that so that's what we'll do next all right so so we have a uh, this bread tied to the cord the electrical cords bread tied to the the steel cable and uh, we're gonna make sure that the steel cable is slightly shorter than the electrical cord that way if uh, if it goes tight it doesn't pull the electrical cord out if it was longer than the electrical cord, it would get tight uh, and the electrical cord would pull out before it got tight and uh, would disconnect. So it's going to make sure it's slightly shorter than the electrical cord. And uh, so we got the ferrule on there. Uh, we're going to use this thing so we got a reinforcing loop so that way we can uh, connect this to another piece with a carabiner or a latch or whatever we want to. So uh, we're going to go ahead and crimp this down, see if we can use that stupid crimping tool from Menards without uh, cutting it, breaking it. And, uh, and then this end to be done. Alright, again, I don't like the fact that that's not a precise crimp, but it appears to be tight enough to hold that in, so I think we should be good. 
And I told you we wouldn't be using these stops, but since this is such a crappy crimping design, I think I'm gonna put a stop on there and crimp it down a little bit uh, just to be on the safe side until I get the right crimping tool. This one's going, this one's going back to Menards. All right, that should hold it. Let's see if it'll cut. Nothing does do that. All right, so now that we got a loop on there and we got a connector on that end, we're gonna do the same thing over here, put another loop on that and, uh, and then put a loop on the other end of that cable. It's more than 50 feet across to that tree. So we'll have to uh, make another loop on the end of one of those, connect it so that we got 100 foot, which will then uh, walk around the bank until we get over to that tree and then uh, we'll be able to pull it out from there. All right, so we put it in on this through the, uh, attach it to the uh, aerating fountain and uh, we got 50 foot of, and we got 50 foot of cord here. And then we uh, put two, two ends on this uh, to attach those two pieces together and another 50 foot so that we can walk this around the lake to those trees over there and then once we get over there we'll uh, cut the excess off that roll there we'll put a end on here and we'll uh, screw this into one of the trees so that that way we can just clip this on and off if we need to take the pump out for any reason the aerator pump so that's the next part of this I gotta walk that around the walk that around the lake all right, so we have a 50 foot out from there is our uh, floating aerating fountain. And uh, I forgot those yellow uh, nylon ropes were 100 foot long and I needed two of those. So two 50 footers only got me to right there. So uh, I would go ahead and I've got the yellow nylon up to the tree. I might leave it like that, I'm not sure. I may uh, take one of these old posts here and uh, put it over here on the bank, which that that uh, steel cable will reach to right this point right here, because uh, that's where I put the the ferrule on the end of that one. Um, we'll just have to see, but uh, hopefully that should keep the muskrat or whatever from chewing through that line at the middle. Uh, I assume that's what did that again don't know it could have been the uh, vibration of the uh, motor going through and rubbing on a nylon rope on a, on a sharp rock or clamshell or something on this little sandbar I wouldn't think it would do that within a day or two but um, don't know and plus the end was was just too clean cut for uh, some sort of vibration friction cut like that so I'm thinking it's the muskrat uh, fortunately muskrats are delicious all right we're back up and running um, remember I was talking about that vibration Maybe you can see that there there is a, a little bit of vibration in those lines but uh, I think that if it was enough to cut through a line on a rock or something on that sandbar it would have been enough to start chewing through it on the attachment points on the fountain also or uh, or even up against this abrasive cement block and it doesn't do that so again I'm I'm leaning towards muskrat theory the conspiracy the muskrat conspiracy 